Hi, welcome back. Well, the uh, demise of religion in Australia is being, I guess, celebrated by some and mourned by others. Uh, but I've got Roy Williams here today, who's written this book, Post God Nation. Is Australia a post God nation, Roy? Yes and no is the answer, uh, Kent. We're still a godful, godly nation uh, mm. in, in certain key respects. I mean, according to the last census, 61% uh, of people still identified as uh, Christian. Mm. But how many of those go to church regularly? Yeah, only about, uh, well, less than 10%. So it's in the single figures now? It's, pr it's in the uh, high single figures yeah, of regular church attendance. Okay. Uh, so that's one way you can measure it. Mm. Uh, but another way, uh, probably a more significant way, uh, is to look at basic aspects of our society that mm. uh, had Christian origins. Mm. So, for example, things as basic as egalitarianism, mm -hmm. uh, the scientific method, mm. uh, the rule of law. Uh, in the book, I try to explain why all of those things are the products of Christianity. And those things mm. aren't about to go away. Which is quite counterintuitive for some people. They would see those things as very secular features of our society. They, they might, but, mm. but they'd be wrong. I mean, all the great scientists mm. of of the Renaissance and afterwards, mm. uh, virtually all of them were devout Christians. Mm. Okay. Uh, that's just, that's history. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, let's, let, let's look at it because yeah. this, is, this is about Australia. Your book is yeah. about Australia in particular. So let's look at that. Now, when, when um, America began as, as a, a settler nation, of course, it was all about religious freedom and the Pilgrim Fathers and, you know, they, they fell to their knees on, on the beach or, or what, you know, that's and right. thank God for bringing them there. Whereas the story we hear about when that, some of those convict ships came in, they landed on the shore. I think, was it Robert Hughes in The Fatal Shore said basically they arrived and it was a drunken orgy. Um, well, <laughs> you there know, was I mean, one night that was, that was pretty loose in yeah. Sydney very, very early on. So, Although, yeah, but, but, but people say Australia is a godless nation from its very beginnings. I mean, they, it, they do, yeah. including Christian historians have yeah. underplayed the role of uh, the churches and, and Christians. Hmm. I think that's a mistake. The more I read into it and researched it, I must admit I was surprised mm. at the extent to which you found in the record vital individuals uh, mm. play, being, being devout Christians. Let me give one example. Yeah, give some examples. A good example is Lachlan Macquarie. Mm -hmm. He's been called justly uh, probably the second father of Australia. Okay, he was one of the early governors Macquarie of New South Wales. Macquarie was the early governor of New South Wales mm. from 1810 to 1821. Mm -hmm. Now, Macquarie turned the colony around. It mm. was a penal colony, pure and simple, a dumping place for convicts. Yeah. Macquarie was the first to say, look, once these people have served their term, they should be free men and, and women, mm. treated on the same level as everyone else. Mm. And he's been praised by historians ever since for, for that sort of enlightened role. What people forget is Macquarie was an evangelical Christian. Mm -hmm. He was a late convert. His wife had been a lifelong evangelical. Okay. And he, so he came to New South Wales imbued with this belief in the power of redemption, uh -huh. that it, all people were equal in the sight of God and that in this new land, once, once they'd served their time and he cut short a lot of sentences, yeah, yeah. Uh, the emancipists were given a second chance. That's, that's really mm. where our fair go ethic comes from. Okay. Point two, yeah. the transportation of convicts would have continued or did continue well into the 19th century. Mm. Uh, and lots of wealthy people loved it because the convicts were a source of free labour. Sure, yeah. Um, for economic reasons, uh, the system would have continued. It was the churches, leading mm. clerics like John Dunmore Lang and others who, who campaigned against transportation on moral grounds. Mm. And, and that was really the first step in Australia's path to becoming a, an independent country. Mm. You had to get rid of that convict system first. And, and you, you point out in, mm. in your book, Roy, yeah. that all through Australia's history, there were key people of strong faith, you know, men, women. I mean, Carolyn Chisholm comes to mind. She's, a, she's yeah. an early one. But, you know, yeah. for example, the, the suffragettes, the, the yeah. women who campaigned for, for the vote for women in the late 19th century, almost overwhelmingly they were... Uh, Christian women. Mm. You know, they came out of that sort of women's Christian temperance union sort of background, didn't Christian they? Christian temperance movement yeah. was absolutely crucial. Mm. And it, it, even coming closer to the, the modern era, I was really surprised to read that the, 
the fair, well, the very conservative um, B. A. Santa Maria. Yes. And his party was actually the first one to speak out against the White Australia policy. B. A. Right? Santa Maria was uh, was a uh, very devout Catholic. Set up the DLP in the nineteen uh, fifties. Seen as a sort of reactionary figure, and in some ways he was, but yes, the DLP was the first party to oppose the White Australia policy. Mm. Um, on the basic Christian ground that, um, you know, God is colour blind. Mm. So I think people forget that multiculturalism is another great example, I argue in the book, mm. of something that the Christian churches don't get enough credit for. Mm. Uh, indigenous reconciliation is yep. another one. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, we, we're fast running out of time. Sure. sure. So yeah. I, I, I do want to sort of cut to the chase. Yep. Because um, we are in a situation, as we said now, where religion, Christianity is declining in Australia. Do you have any practical tips as to how we might um, reclaim that? I think the education system is, is the key here. Mm -hmm. um, for a couple of generations now, children coming out of most schools in Australia haven't been taught the basics mm. about religion. I'm not talking here about doctrinal instruction in any particular mm. denomination. I'm just talking about basic religious concepts, mm. the metaphysical questions of life. You know, mm. Is there a God? Why am I here? So even the comparative religion stuff yes. about Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, in, the, the whole works. I yeah. think every Australian child should be equipped uh, by the time they leave school to to, to educate themselves properly about these questions and ask the right questions. Mm. So then at least if they're going to make a decision on faith, they can do it on a basis of knowledge rather than ignorance. Correct. Yeah. It's, it's secularism by default now, I firmly believe, mm. not secularism by choice. Sure. One more tip just before we finish. I reckon there should be far more conscience votes mm. in Parliament. I think every every vote, more or less, is a is a true conscience. Yeah, vote. I think that, you're saying that everything except was it supply. It, yeah, and yeah, some yeah. of those real basic vote, votes of no confidence. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, uh, see, religion, I don't think, can be confined just to what happens in church on a Sunday. Sure. You know, it's part of everything. All the big issues about mm. welfare and uh, climate change and uh, uh, not, you know, all of these are at core mm. moral issues. And look, there, there's so much more of these, you know, sort of issues that you cover in this book. Where can we get? It? Is it to a ABC shops? So uh, ABC certainly, shops? Um, Kurong mm -hmm. has, cert has certainly got plenty of copies, and, and most good bookshops, as they mm. say. Thanks so much for your time, Roy. I Thank really you, Ken. Appreciate it. My pleasure. We'll see you after the break.